volume. There we go. Okay, friends. So how does yoga help you with your golf game? Um, yoga is so wonderful because it can help improve flexibility. Um, it can help improve strength and stability. Um, we're going to go through several postures today, um, working on twisting postures to help balance out the core and balance out um, that twisting action because I know as you're golfing, you're going in one direction, so let's make sure that we're strengthening and getting the flexibility both ways. Um, so what we're going to start with, and I'm going to point out postures that you can do before your game um, on the course, um, and also um, just incorporating them into an entire flow. Because if you continue to get a nice yoga practice, um, it's going to build strength flexibility that will help you in your game at any time. So let's get started. Knees to the outside edges of the mat. We're going to go into what's called child's pose. Big toes to touch. Sitting bones reach back towards the heels and then extending arms long and overhead. So child's pose is a really nice posture because it helps to release the lumbar spine, open up the hips and the inner thighs. Um, we also do child's pose in the beginning of class uh, because it helps you to get that internal focus, which is another really big thing um, in golf is having that internal focus and sharpness um, and mental clarity. So we're going to work on the breathing and the postures, flexibility and strength. All right, so as you're surrendering down into your child's pose, I like to rock back and forth just a little bit just to allow my hips to wake up a little bit and my spine um, to give me a little feedback on how it's feeling. What I hear oftentimes is that people have a lot of low lumbar discomfort. Um, especially golfers, and it's because you're doing a repetitive motion. So strengthening the core is going to help that considerably, and just lengthening out those muscles through the spine are also going to help. So let's surrender forehead down to the mat, extending fingertips long and overhead. Arms can be up and overhead, or if it doesn't feel good on the shoulders, bringing them into cactus arms, and then just take a moment to rest. Close the eyes and take a moment to just check in with your body. See how it's feeling. Um, notice as you're moving into a deeper, slower breath, are you getting any feedback from your body at all? Right? Are you feeling sensations of congestion in the body, stiffness, um, maybe some injuries that you're feeling as well? And we will just breathe into those areas and take good care of them. So. Again, in yoga, we do what's called the ujjayi pranayama, um, and that's breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. And there's a slight constriction in the back of the throat, so it's an audible breath, and it becomes a really meditative breath. So taking lips to touch and taking the tongue off the roof of your mouth, slowly sip the air in through the nose and breathe it out through the nose. Taking your time, sipping the air in through the nose, And the breath is almost like you're fogging up a mirror, right? So you're creating, like I said, a little constriction in the back of the throat to make it audible. And I think you'll notice immediately it begins to calm the nervous system. So let's take three more breaths in that ujjayi pranayama. You don't have to remember any of these names, um, but boy, can you impress your friends on the golf course if you can remember some of these names. As you're about to tee off and you're telling them, I need to express my ujjayi pranayama for a moment. Um, I think they'll get a kick out of that. All right, one more breath, long and even. Perfect, and then from this child's pose position, we're gonna come up to tabletop. So, Hands are underneath shoulders, knees are underneath the hips. So I want to wake up the spine, right? That's a big deal if you're going to be doing any sort of twisting motion. So cat and cow is how we wake up the spine or we begin to. So on the in-breath, the belly is going to reach the mat, the head and tailbone are going to reach to the sky. And on the exhale, you're going to tip the tailbone towards the mat and let the rest of the spine follow until you're tipping chin to chest. I love this posture. 
um, because it wakes up every portion of the spine. And once you finally get up to the upper back, the thoracic spine, it's a really great stretch separating the shoulder blades, bringing chin to chest. Good. And then it also helps to wake up the belly, the core muscles, the abdominal core. Very, very slowly. So we're finding some length to the muscles first before we take any action in terms of twisting. We want to decompress the spine as much as we can. Now this posture can be done sitting in a chair as well, just with hands on knees. So it's something you could do at the golf course. If you don't want to get on hands and knees, you can just sit down on the bench and do a little cat and cow from the bench. All right, let's find our neutral spine again. And this time, putting uh, weight into the right hand and lifting left hand high to the sky. We're going to thread the needle, but first I want to warm up the twist. So inhale, extending as big as you can get and opening up the, the pectorals, gazing up to the sky. And I like to just pause and hold and then circle the arms around. Good. Reaching it up, reaching it open, and moving it with the breath. So on the inhale, you're reaching as big and as broad as you can get, and on the exhale, you're circling it around. Good. Inhale, and then exhale, and then reverse that. All right, so we're getting both motions here. And this could easily be done from a standing position as well, just circling the arms around. One more time. Good, and then now extend it nice and long. Reach it high to the sky, full breath. And then exhale, we're not gonna set it down. You're just gonna sweep it through. And then inhale, lift it up again and open. And then exhale, sweep it through. And then open, open, open. One more time, sweep it through. Reach it up and open, and this time you're going to let it rest. You're going to come all the way through, let the shoulders settle down, side of the head, and then the top hand can come along the bottom, and I'll actually twist in your direction so you can see what I'm doing. Top hand can press along the bottom, or if you want to expand on that, you can reach the hand high to the sky and take a little half bind. Another way to expand on that is extending the leg out long. All right, so a couple breaths here. This is a fantastic stretch through the thoracic spine. You're getting a nice, easy rotation with the stability of the ground underneath you. And the extension of the leg actually acts like a kickstand, so it gives you even more stability. All right, let's unravel. So grounding the hand, reaching the arm nice and high, Plant it back down onto the mat, and let's just neutralize the spine again by two cat and cows. So in-breath, belly reaches to the mat, head and tailbone to the sky, and begin by tipping the tailbone, separating the shoulder blades. One more time, inhale, full breath in. In through the nose, and out through the nose. Back to your neutral spine. Left hand grounds. Right hand reaches high to the sky, start circling it around. And you can widen your knees a little bit if you'd like, just to give a little more foundation. Moving with the breath, full breath in, exhale it out. One more time. Good, and then just reverse the flow. Reach it up, reach it around. Again, reaching it up. And back around one more time. Reaching it up, back around. Now extend it nice and tall, opening up through the pectoral, through the chest. And then on the exhale, sweep it through. We're not gonna rest it yet. And then inhale, lift it up. Exhale, think of the belly coming through and then the shoulders. Reaching up nice and long. Good. And then one more time, nice and tall. Reach it through, and then this time, let it rest. Let the shoulder rest. Now, if you can't get your head on the mat, that's where a pillow or a rolled up blanket would be kind of nice, just under your head or under your shoulder. And I did this side so you could see what I was doing, so just to be balanced for myself and my body, I'm gonna switch and go to the other side. And remember, you can reach the hand high and you can half bind, just to open up the shoulder a little bit more, and if you'd like, you can extend the leg. 
Think of the belly coming through because we always want to twist from the lowest area of the spine and then allow the rest of the spine to follow. Good, let's unravel. Reach it nice and tall, breathing in. And grounding down again. All fours, cat and cow, in breath, we move into your cow pose. And exhale, we find the cat spine. One more time, inhale. And exhale. Tabletop. Now, let's isolate the lower abdominals, so the transverse abdominals right here. If you were to cough, you'd feel them engage, you'd feel them tighten. That's what I want nice and firm, so drawing them in like a little internal corset, a little internal hug, and extending right arm and left leg. So now we're trying to do some strengthening and we're trying to wake up the spine and the core a little bit more, or the abdominals. So take a deep breath in, and then exhale elbow to knee. Inhale, extend, reaching nice and long, Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, reaching nice and long. Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, extend it nice and long. You can stay just as you are. Again, working on those little stabilizing muscles. My glutes are nice and tight and firm. And if you want to extend into more of a stretch, grabbing the back ankle, kicking in and opening up through the hip flexors a little bit, and again, through the shoulder. Good, reach it nice and long, and then lower it down. Cat and cow, neutralize the spine again, just stretch it out. Now, if this is not in your practice yet, grabbing onto your ankle, you may be surprised as you work through a yoga practice, a regular yoga practice, one day, someday, you will be able to grab onto that ankle. All right, now let's just extend Right leg, left arm. Again, pulling in the lower abdominals, firming the glutes. I'm gazing right at the mat. And reach out through the heel so the back side of the leg is um, just firm and engaged. Take an inhale, lengthen, and then exhale, elbow to knee. Think of inhale, we're finding length through every part of the body, elbow to knee. Good. And exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, stay long because this is some really great strengthening, right? Or bringing foot to hand. Think of all the little stabilizing muscles through the core and through the spine. Good, reach it out long and lower it down. Cat and cow again. Inhale and exhale. One more. Okay, let's go back and sit back on our heels for a minute and just roll out the wrists. So one thing I want to stretch too is um, through the forearm and through the wrist. So in your tabletop pose, first of all, let's just tip the hands down and then resting gently on the hands. So fingertips are facing my knees and I'm just pulling back and getting a nice little stretch on the top of the wrist. Breathing into it and then just flipping it around so fingertips are now facing me. Once again, but I'm on my palms. Good, and throughout our practice, we're gonna be doing um, a lot of strengthening through the hands and the forearms, which I think is really great for your grip, your golf grip. All right, circle it around again. And let's ground the hands, stepping out into a high plank. I think plank pose is one of the most efficient ways for stabilizing um, the entire body. It strengthens the abdominals, it strengthens the spine, upper body, lower body, all in one beautiful exercise. So right now I'm just rocking back and forth gently on my toes. Just rocking back and forth. My shoulders are pulled in, shoulder blades are pressing into my spine, belly's firm, glutes are firm. And just again, I'm waking things up right now. All right, let's pulse it four, and three, and two, and one. Pause and hold. Inhale, just lift the hips nice and high, and you're in your first downward facing dog. So we know how to space ourselves with down dog because if you're in plank pose, shoulders should be right over the wrists, feet or hip distance, and just lift the hips high. 
So if you're working on flexibility through the hamstrings and the calves, just bend the knees. Get a nice generous bend of the knees. Because what I want is a long spine here. I don't really care if the legs are straight or not. I want a long spine, and then you can straighten the legs to your ability. And as you warm up through class, you may be able to lengthen the legs a little bit more. But to begin with, let's just pedal the heels out. And as you're doing that, I'm going to walk you through a really good downward facing dog. Pointer fingers are facing front of the room. The rest of the fingers are spread out evenly from there. There's an internal rotation to the forearm, so the weight rolls into the pointer finger and the thumb. Right? And then as you lift high, there's an external rotation of the upper arm so that the shoulder blades go back in place. All right, let's inhale our right leg high, and then bend the knee, open the hip. Get a really nice stretch here through the inner thigh and the groin muscle of the standing leg and the hip flexor quadricep of the lifted leg. And then very slowly square the hips back off. And let's bring our knee to our nose and all the way through into a low lunge. Right, and so right now you are on hands. We're gonna come up to fists so you've got a little bit of height. And we're just gonna lift the hips and ease down and lower. So on the inhale, we're gonna lift and lengthen. And on the exhale, you're gonna ease down and lower. Good, let's do two more. Inhale, lift. And exhale, lower. One more, inhale, lift. And exhale, lower down to the back knee. So we're in a low lunge. And inhale, sweep the arms up and overhead. So again, we're using some stabilizing muscles, firming the glutes. Zipping up the core, reaching hands nice and high, shoulders release. Arms could be out a little bit more, arms could be here. So find what works for you through the shoulders. That's another thing we're going to kind of look at in a moment. All right, take a breath in. And then open to a little baby back bend. So we're getting a lift up, an engagement through the core, and a nice heart opener, a nice chest opener. and a nice strengthening through the lower body. All right, perfect. Let's reach hands back down to the mat. Take an inhale, left hand will stay grounded, and an exhale, spiral, right hand high to the sky. So it's first little twist here from a crescent lunge or a low lunge position. Good, and just pause and hold, breathe in. Think again of the belly coming through, my belly to the thigh, and then my chest and shoulders are gonna come through, and finishing with the gaze up to the sky. Good, let's release the hand back down to the mat. All right, now we're gonna pull forward and back a little bit. So we're gonna pull the hips back, toes are pointing, and then toes are slowly going to flex towards the nose, and then shift the weight forward again into lunge. Pull the hips back, toes are pointing, toes are slowly gonna flex, and then shift it forward again. So I've done this in a few classes. Keep doing that with your breath. Right? Just keep moving very slowly with your breath. You're going to exhale as you're lengthening here. You're pulling back into the deeper stretch. Inhale as you come forward. The beauty of this stretch right now, we're doing what's called nerve flossing. So when people have sciatica in their, you know, right through their hip and it runs down their leg, this is a really gentle stretch for that nerve. And sometimes you get that um, from sitting too much. Um, and it's just a, it's a really nice, easy stretch to help calm the nerve down and get a little more length to that nerve. Good. A couple more times. Good. Now this time let's hold it back here, inching the fingertips back a little bit more. If you have any knee pain, be sure to grab your blanket and put it under the knee or roll up your mat, double up the mat. All right. So toes are flexed towards my nose, and what I'm doing is I'm engaging my quadricep, so the top side of my leg shortens as the back side lengthens. So take a nice inhale, and then exhale a little fold. So a nice lunge posture is a great thing to do as well as you're warming up on the golf course before your game. Let's take three more breaths. Inhale, and exhale. One more. Nice. Shifting it forward, grounding the hands, 
Front foot meets the back. You're in plank pose again. Let's just rock on the balls of our feet forward and back a little bit, and then we'll add on a little more. So, and I also want to show you what a Chaturanga Dandasana or a high to low push up looks like in yoga. Again, nice strengthening. So we're rocking four and three and two and one. Just pause, start bringing the knee to the center. Switching knees, marching four and three and two and one. Now go to the outside of the triceps. Right, just a little more strengthening again. Four, three, two and one. Finding your plank pose. On the inhale, you're going to shift your weight forward. Shoulders are in front of the wrists. On the exhale, you're pinning elbows into the spine, or excuse me, into the ribs. And inhale, lift up. This is called upward facing dog. And then pulling hips into downward facing dog. Breathing in. And the next time, I'll do a nice modification. Inhaling left leg high. Bending the knee, open the hip. Stay as you are if you want to circle it around a little bit. Again, maybe you need a bend in the knee. Perfect. Let's square it up. Knee comes to the nose. Easing into low lunge. Coming from hands onto fists. Neutral wrist now, so palms are facing each other. And on the inhale, we're going to lift. Then exhale, lower down. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower down. Two more. Lift it up. Ease up. Ease down, right? We're not forcing anything. And that's why the breath is so important because it gives you a signal to your body. If your breath is constricted at all, you're probably going too deep. All right, so we're now on the, <clears throat> on the back knee. Inhale, reaching arms up and overhead. Firming the glutes, squeezing them together, zipping up the spine. The lower abdominals are tucking in nice and tight. I'm reaching up and overhead. Good, now I've got my stability. I'm gonna open up into a little baby back bend. Chest is nice and wide. Good, reaching hands back down to the mat. Right hand will stay planted. Take an inhale and then exhale. Take your first spiral this way. Left, or the belly comes through to the left. Shoulders and reaching up, finishing with the gaze. Long, even breath in. Long, even breath out. Coming back down to the center. Take an inhale and then exhale. We're pulling the hips back. We're pointing and then we're slowly coming into a flexion. And then grounding the foot, shifting hips forward. Inhale. Exhale, pull back, pointing the toes. Flexing the foot. Good. Couple more of those. Nice. One more. Pull it back. Toes flex. Walk the fingertips back a little bit more. Lengthening on the inhale. Exhale. Take a nice fold. You could certainly have a bend in the knee. Find what works for you. I would rather have a nice safe spine and a straight back than to have that leg straight and the big rounding through the spine, right? Try to find a connection of the belly to the thigh. So I start here and maybe throughout my practice I can inch my leg down a little bit more, maybe not. But find safety and stability through the spine over trying to overstretch. Okay, one more breath. Hmm, shift it forward. Ground the hands. Front foot meets the back. Now I'm going to show you the modification. So coming down to knees as we're building strength. Weight shifts forward. I'm pinning the elbows in. So they're not wide. Elbows are pinned in. I'm lowering all the way down to the mat. The tops of my feet are there as well. And I'm just going to open to a cobra pose, which is a nice strengthener through the spine. Lower back down. Pull the hips back. Curl the toes under, downward facing dog. That nice inverted V. Okay, friends, breathe in. Breathe it out. And then walk yourself hip distance, or feet hip distance, to the top of the mat. Find a nice halfway lift so we're getting some more length. Get a bend in the knee and then let the belly connect to the thighs and then finish gazing between the knees. This is called ragdoll pose, interlacing hands in front of you or maybe taking your first chest expansion, bringing them behind. That's what we're going to use the strap in just a moment for. Good. 
Two more breaths. Again, head hangs heavy. I'm looking between my knees, so my cervical spine has the opportunity to lengthen as well. I'm getting blood and oxygen to the brain. Really great way to reset. You can do this on the golf course. You can do this any time throughout your game if you just need to refresh. Let's release and slowly come all the way to stand. If you need to refresh, if you need a nice lengthening stretch through the spine, it's great posture. All right, so grab your bathrobe strap, grab your golf club if you have it, grab yoga strap if you have it, um, and we're going to walk into what's called Tadasana, and I think this is a really great posture that I want to walk you through. It's the foundational pose for everything in yoga, for every standing posture and a lot of the seated ones. So you're grounding your feet, hip distance, toes pointing forward, right? And so you're going to feel the four corners of your feet connecting to the earth. And then running that energy up the legs, quadriceps firm nicely, and we're going to work it back. Glutes are firming nicely, and then we're going to work up through the core. So think of a root lock, right? How best to explain this? I would say, let's say you are in the middle of your golf game, and you've had too many visits to the beverage cart, <laughs> and the porta potty is too far away, right? You've got to go, but you can't. So you're going to engage those muscles through the base of the spine and pulling them in and pulling them up, right? In yoga, we call that Lula Bandha. And then you slowly connect all of those little muscles up to the transverse abdominals right here. So you're drawing that in nice and firm. So right now, I am so stable through my lower body that my upper body can move in various directions without falling over. All right, so grab your strap, and we're going to grab it just a little bit wider than shoulder distance. Right? And let's start to find that anchoring through the lower body and inhale, just lifting arms up and overhead. And on the exhale, you can stay here or you can continue and just opening and bending at the elbows into cactus arms. And then inhale, bring it nice and tall and exhale, lower it down again. Now before we go again, take a nice shoulder shrug. Bring the shoulders up or forward, up, back, and down. We're not popping the chest forward because our lower abdominals and our glutes, we have a nice little corset going all the way around, is holding it nice and firm. So the chest never pops forward, it's always nice and firm. So inhale, let's lift up again and exhale, open the chest as best you can, reaching up and reaching down. Again, lifting up and then open. Pause and just hold at your comfort, opening up through the pectorals again. Just breathing. And then lifting it up and overhead. Stabilize again through the hips, through the pelvis, and then little side body bending. Good. Inhale as we stack the spine. Exhale, side body bend. Every time you inhale, you're trying to get as much length to the spine as you can, as much space between the hips and the low ribs. Good. And the more you're doing these yoga postures, the more it becomes just a fluent communication, a mind-body communication, and your body just does it automatically. These little engagements through that root lock and through the core lock. Good. Now, I just want to bring you through a twist from a standing position. Bring your arms down if you need to just get the blood back into your hands again. Um, but I want to just show you how this works so nicely when you start with the lower abdominals. So if I just start twisting, right, all I'm twisting is my rib cage and up, so my thoracic spine and up, and I'm not getting nearly as much rotation. When I start considering letting my belly button come through, and I'm pulling from the lower abdominals and twisting from the lower spine first, and then letting everything spiral from there, I'm getting quite a bit more range of motion. And so I want you to consider doing this with your breath. So inhale to the center, and exhale, let the belly come through. And there's quite an engagement here of the core, of the abdominal core, as the shoulders come through, right? It's really easy when you're going into a lunge pose, like revolve crescent lunge, and you're actually using your elbow connecting to the outside of the knee to make yourself go into that twist. It's much different, though, when it's just the core muscles 
doing it for you. All right, let's do one more to each side. So it's an exhale when you twist. An inhale, I'm resetting, finding length. And an exhale with the twist. Good inhale, coming back to the center. Let's lower the strap down. All right, now we're gonna go and start our actual flow. We're gonna start, oh, I missed one thing. Um, I'd love to do a chest expansion, so grab this as well. Grab your strap again. Um, so if your hands can touch, beautiful. If they can't, this is what it looks like. So to begin with, I wanna just bend the knees, take an inhale, so spine is nice and long, and exhale, just moving into the fold. But think again of belly connecting to the, uh, to the thighs, spine is long, and then let the chest just kind of collapse down onto the thighs, rolling the weight into the balls of the feet. Good, and just do a little hang time here because it feels really nice. Nice little chest expansion. Again, if you can get the palms to touch, then you can interlace hands or grab opposite elbow as well in the event you don't have a golf club or a strap. All right, a couple more breaths. Notice the lengthening, the safe lengthening through the hamstrings when knees are bent. Notice the lengthening through the low lumbar spine, the opening through the chest, the pectorals, and the anterior deltoids, the front of the shoulders. Good, and now just let the hands hang. Get a good exhale out. Come to a halfway lift, and then reverse your swan dive is what we call it, all the way up into Tadasana Mountain Pose and bring hands back to heart center. All right, now we're gonna flow breath to movement. So now you can get rid of the strap. So coming to the very top of your mat, I'm gonna do it sideways so you can see how the flow goes and how we link our postures together. We're gonna to inhale, bringing arms up and overhead. And then exhale, bend the knees, fold forward, straight back. Inhale, open to a halfway lift, long spine. Ground the hands, step back into high plank. You could be on the knees. I'm gonna show you a modified one without coming all the way down to the mat. Shifting the weight forward, pin the elbows in. I can actually feel my low ribs. And then just straighten the arms, come to the tops of the feet. Hips are off the mat. This is upward facing dog. A tremendous stretch through the hip flexors, through the psoas, and then bring the hips back into downward facing dog. Breathe in and breathe out. Rolling up onto all 10 toes, bend the knees, bring the belly to the thighs. Great stretch for the arches of the feet. Take yourself to the top of the mat. Inhale, find a halfway lift. Bend the knees, exhale, fold. Surrender down, belly to thighs. Inhale, reverse all the way up into standing. This time, let's take a baby back bend. Open up the heart space. Good, inhale, bring palms to touch. Exhale, bend the knees, fold forward, belly to thighs. Inhale, open long spine. Exhale, ground the hands, stepping back. Take another breath in as you shift forward. Lower down, elbows pin to the ribs. Straighten the arms, I come to the tops of my feet. Shoulders release from the ears. Hips lift high, downward facing dog. Breathing in and breathing out. Nice, one more time, roll up into all 10 toes. Bend the knees, bring the belly back to the thighs. Awesome stretch. Walking feet behind hands. Inhale, open, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, high to the sky. This time, interlace your hands in a nice steeple grip. Again, if you don't have a, happen to have a strap, you can take a nice side body bend. And you're feeling it so beautifully all the way through the shoulder girdle, through the side body. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale, side body bend. Good, inhale, center. Exhale, open, baby, back bend. Heart opens, chest opens, palms to touch, hands through the heart, forward fold. Open to a halfway lift. Grounding the hands, stepping back, I'm in high plank. Take another inhale. Shift the weight forward, pin the elbows in, lower. Straighten the arms, coming into upward facing dog. And exhale, bring it into downward facing dog. Long breath in, long breath out. Rolling onto 10 toes, bend the knees, belly to thighs. Take it to the top of the mat. 
Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, chair pose. Chair pose, Utkatasana. All right, so in chair pose, feet are either hip distance or together. I think it's um, more stable to have our feet hip distance. So I'm sitting back in my chair. I can see all 10 toes. My knees are drawing back. You never want the knees in front of the toes. So we're sitting back in a chair. I'm firming the glutes. Remember that root lock, we're pulling up, engaging the core as well. Arms can be here, they can be up and overhead. And just noticing where you're feeling tension through the shoulders, right? If it's flexibility or if it's impingement. You know it's impingement and that's as far as your arm can go is if the ball is back in the socket nicely, shoulder blades are down against the spine. And as you're lifting up, you feel the sensation here in the back versus here in the front, where it would be muscle flexibility versus possible impingement. All right, why do I tell you all of this? Because it, it helps you when you're doing your golf swing to know where you're feeling the sensations through the shoulders. All right, so we sat here for quite a while. Let's stand up for just a moment and rest because I want to take a twist first. Good, now sit back into your chair. This time hands are going to come to heart center. Good, take a deep breath in. We'll take our first prayer twist from a standing position. So you can bring elbow in between the knees Give it a hug, and then think of belly coming through shoulders and gaze. Right? If that doesn't serve you through your low lumbar, if you're feeling any triggers through the back, it can be a gentle twist. My belly's coming through my shoulders and my gaze. Now, if you still have more range of motion, you can bring knees together, elbow to the outside. Lengthen belly, shoulders, gaze, and then you can half or whole bind it if you'd like. Let's just take two more breaths. Inhale, weight in the heels, exhale. One more, inhale. On the exhale, release into a forward fold, toe heel the feet, hip distance. Find a halfway lift, shake the legs out. Nice little generous fold, bend the knees. Enjoy. Again, nice little reset, refresh, getting blood and oxygen to the brain. Sitting back in your chair again. Sweep up into chair pose. Weight in the heels, glutes are firing. Strengthening, right? We're strengthening through the hips, through the pelvis. Hands come to heart, inhale. And on the exhale, you're gonna reverse that twist. So going to the left. So whether elbow comes between the knees, I'm gonna lengthen the spine, belly's gonna come through, shoulders gaze, hands to heart, hands to fly, maybe half bind or whole bind. Hold and breathe, three. Two. This time, come to rise on one. Inhale, Tadasana. Exhale, Swan Dive, fold forward. Let's add on. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, ground the hands, step back. Modification, come to knees, lower all the way to the mat. Remember, we did this before. Inhale, a cobra pose. Hips stay on the mat for cobra. And exhale, pulling back into downward facing dog. All right, let's inhale, right leg high. Exhale, bend the knee, open the hip. Another little opportunity for a stretch. Squaring the hips off. Right knee comes to right tricep. Just breathe. Pause and breathe here. Good, inhale, bring it nice and high. Right knee comes to left tricep. Just pause here and breathe. Holding. Bring it nice and high. Knee comes to the nose. And without momentum, the foot comes to the top of the mat, even if you have to walk it up there four times. Good. Once you come into low lunge, firm the glutes, squeeze them in, pull up of the pelvic floor, stabilize through the lower abdominals. It's like an internal hug, internal corset, lifting up nice and tall, crescent lunge. Now inhale, we're going to rise, and then exhale, lower down. Inhale, we're going to rise, and exhale, lower down. Two more. Rise, and lower. One more time. Rise. Lower, ease into that twist, gentle twist. My belly's coming through my shoulders and finishing with my gaze. Now, if you want to get more into the psoas, back hand comes to the back leg, top hand comes to the sky. Breathe in, breathe out. Inhale, bring it back to the center, straighten the leg. Exhale, open the hips, and you're just going to ground the back foot, warrior two. 
Beautiful. Let's straighten the leg and then ease back down. Shoulders relax. Straighten the leg and ease back down. One more time. Straighten. Ease back into warrior two. We're going to reverse our warriors to get a nice side body stretch again, creating space between the low ribs and the hips. Now that you've created the space, you can go into extended side angle. Good. And you may need to shorten the stance a little bit. Now here, you can stay as you are, or we may take a half bind. Reaching fingertips up, creating length on the inhale, exhale, draw the hand behind you. Shoulder opens, rotation opens, chest opens, bottom hand reaches to the floor. If you still have more to give, then you can clasp hands. Really, really nice strengthening, nice stretching and opening. You can use that strap if your fingertips don't reach. One more breath. Go ahead and release. Floor to sky. Reverse your triangle. So straighten the leg. Lift it up, lift it back. Create some more space. And then shift it into triangle pose. Now my hips are so stable right now because I'm engaging my glutes, my pelvic floor, my lower abdominals. And I'm pressing in opposing directions between both feet. So I've got a lot of mobility here. And so what I'd like to do now is a little more strengthening. So I'm going to reach my bottom hand forward. So I'm getting a lot of side body strengthening, core strengthening. Good. You can stay as you are or you can increase that even more. Little micro bend in the front knee. Holding here. Three, two. Let's reverse our triangle on one. Reaching up. Heels tick in. Toes tick out. Sinking down into what's called goddess pose. Externally rotate the thighs. Knees track out towards the pinky toe. Let's firm the glutes a little bit. So we're going to just track the knees back. Release. Squeeze and track the knees back. Release. Squeeze and track the knees back. So you're feeling it right here. Good. Now we're going to bring hands up and to the back of the head. Little side body stretching. So inhale and exhale, bringing elbow to knee. So stretching and then rotating center. Elbow to knee, inhale, lift it up, exhale, belly, shoulders, gaze, comes through. Elbow to knee, lift it up. I know you're probably saying, how long are we going to be doing this for from this posture? And that's when I really want you to dig into your breath, right? Finding a sense of calm, focus, concentration, and sending that message to the rest of the body. We're not dying here, and if we have to, we can straighten our legs. Good. One more. All right, now let's straighten. Whoo! Bring the feet parallel. Lifting up, and then moving into a wide-legged fold. Fingertips are going to stay grounded right in front of us. Knees can bend if you need to. Right hand's going to plant. Left hand's going to spiral to the sky. My belly's going to come through. My shoulders gaze. Little twist. All of this beautiful muscle memory. Body's communicating how it would like to move into this twist. Left hand will ground, belly through, shoulders gaze. Don't forget to lengthen. Beautiful. All right, hands come center. Take an inhale, and we're just going to walk to the right foot, pivot, and come into another low lunge. Inhale, reaching arms up and overhead. Exhale, take a little baby back bend again. Front body opening. Fingertips come to the sky. Side body bend now to the right. So you can have that steeple grip. You can bring hand to the hip. Or you can bring fingertips down to the mat. Good. Coming back to the center. Hands come back down. Straightening the front leg, take a breath in and exhale, straighten toes, curl back. Another opportunity for this awesome little stretch through the hamstring, stretch through the spine, gazing down towards the knee versus looking up so the cervical spine gets length too. All right, shifting forward, let's walk the foot up and out. And I'm going to face you so you can see what I'm doing. So from traditional lunge, we're moving into runner's lunge. And from runner's lunge, all I'd like you to do is shift forward and back with your breath. 
just finding ease and comfort through the hips as you're slowly allowing them to open. Right? Perfect. And then finally settle yourself into a runner's lunge. So you can stay on the top of the foot. You can pull the hips back and come to the side of the foot, but the knee has to follow the foot, right? So that you've got healthy knees here. And for me, that feels really, really nice. And then I just do a little rocking on the back knee as long as it feels okay. If your knee's feeling uncomfortable, the back knee, put a blanket underneath it. And you could stay here, or you could come down onto forearms. Or use that beautiful pillow or whatever you grabbed or bolster um, and put forearms on top of that or the blankets. Find what feels the best. And you can just stay rocking, you can stay stable, um, but connect with your breath here because a lot of people have very tight hips and this is a challenging posture. So long, even breathing, communicating, everything's okay, you're not overstretching. If you're feeling any sort of pain, you're backing up meaning you'll use some props to give yourself more support. All right, so you can stay as you are, or you can begin to take a little twist. So my left hand's gonna plant, and I'm gonna grab onto my right knee and think again, I'm gonna find some length, and my belly's gonna come through, and my shoulder's gonna finish, and then my gaze. Belly, shoulders, gaze. You can stay as you are. Some of you have the flexibility to grab onto the back foot. That's another nice use for the strap. You can hook it around the top of the foot. Good, and then lowering down, grounding the hands. Guess what? Another opportunity for plank. <laughs> hands are under shoulders. We're just going to march and march and march and march and march to the outside, 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 inside. Good, and just pause and hold. Breathe and breathe and breathe. Four, three, two, shift your weight forward, pin the elbows in, squeeze the rib cage. Up dog or cobra, downward facing dog. Now, for those of you who are new to yoga, do you understand the strengthening you're getting through the forearms, the wrists, the hands? All right, lifting left leg high, bend the knee, open the hip. Good, slowly square it off, knee to nose. Gently into low lunge, firming the glutes, pulling everything into the midline, and then we're stacking the spine, and then sweeping arms up. And inhale, low rise, and exhale, lower. Inhale, rise, exhale, lower. Two more. Rise it up, and lower. I'm moving you up and down so that you are understanding the stabilizing muscles again, right? They're all firing to hold you in place. All right, so let's inhale center again, and then exhale. Think of the belly coming through, the shoulders, and then finishing with the gaze, extending arms long. Squeezing into the midline, rotating up the spine. Same as you are, the back hand can come to the back thigh, front hand can reach to the sky. Be mindful not to pop the chest forward, Pulling the low ribs in. Good, inhale, let's come to center. And exhale, open to your warrior two. I'll reposition. All you're doing is grounding the back foot. Heel to arch alignment. Good, let's lift, give the thigh a break. Exhale, lower. Shoulders release. Lift. And exhale, lower. Good. One more time, lift. And lower down. Nice. Take an inhale, find the little length. And then an exhale, extended side angle. Remember here, you can reach up to the sky, opening up through the chest. Shoulder opens. There's a little rotation to the torso. Good, bottom hand reaches to the floor. Staying as you are, or maybe taking a whole bind here. Making sure that you're creating space. We're not compressing down into the hip. Holding three, two, release the hands. Reverse your triangle, you get to straighten that leg. Find a little more space between the low ribs and the hip. And then lift up on the exhale, go into triangle pose. 
tearing the mat in half between the front foot and the back foot. Mula bound it right at root lock. Low abdominals, nice and firm, glutes firm. All of this is firm. So I have so much ability to move my upper body. Strengthening now here, maybe here. Let's last four, three, two. We're back up. Remember this. Toes stick out, heels stick in, knees track out. Beautiful. Hands behind the head. Inhale. Exhale, lower. And lift. Little twist. Come center. Lower. And lift. Twist. And center. Nice. How's the stability going as you're lowering? Lower. Lift. Belly, shoulders, gaze. Close your eyes if you want to really feel through this, right? And there goes your balance as soon as you close your eyes. Nice. Good. One more time to each side. We've got this. Lower. Lift. Twist. Center. Lower. Lift. Twist. Center. Release. Straighten the legs. Bring the feet parallel. Inhale. Lift tall. Exhale. Lower. Good. Shifting the hips a little bit from side to side. Bend the knees as much as you need to. Maybe slowly easing into some side lunging. And actually, if you're going to do side lunging, you're want, going to want to tip the toes back out towards the corner of the mat. Beautiful. So you can just take a nice wide-legged forward fold, or you can stretch out a little bit more through side lunging, inner thigh, outer thigh. Let's take three more breaths. And two. And beautiful one. Coming back to the center. Walking, low lunge to the front of the mat. Dropping down to the bottom knee. Inhale, arms up and overhead. Steeple grip. Lifting up tall, little baby back bend. Lifting up tall again, side body bend. Hands can stay in steeple grip. You can grab to the outside of the hip or maybe reach down to the floor. Beautiful. Coming back to center. Grounding the hands. Shifting back and forth as you slowly inch the foot to the outside of the mat. And I'm going to shift your way again for a runner's lunge, right? Move all the congestion out. Actually, I forgot we did a little um, half splits here. So bring it back to the center again, and then let's pull the hips back. Toes follow. Fingertips walk back. Inhale, lengthen, and exhale, take a nice fold. Hmm. Good. Shift forward. Walk the foot out again. Runner's lunge. Use the props as you need to. Again, if you're going to come onto the outside edge of the foot, pull back. Let the knee come out to follow the foot. What you don't want is knee out, foot planted. Right? Use your props as needed. Maybe under the back knee. Whatever feels really good in your body. A couple more breaths. Around the foot. If you're on forearms, coming up to hands. Front foot meets the back. Our last little plank. Marching it out. March four and three and two and one. Outside. Outside. Two and one. Inside. Two and one. Pause and hold. Rock it forward. Four, three, two, and one. Shift it forward. Pin the elbows in. Remember, if you're coming all the way down to the mat, this is what it looks like. Lifting up into cobra, pulling back, downward facing dog. It's a beautiful thing. Breathing in, breathing out. Let's take ourselves to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, sweep it high into Tadasana. Exhale, hands come to heart center. Tadasana is mountain pose. All right, so let's ground both feet evenly, spreading toes out evenly, firming the glutes. Beautiful. And let's cross right foot in front of left. Right. Um, ground down to the big toe mount. Press down to the big toe mount. Inhale, lift up, and then exhale, take a little fold. Good. 
Maybe fingertips are coming down to the mat. Feel free to get a bend in the knee. Inhale as we're center. And then exhale, walking fingertips over to the right. Moving into the hips and the IT band. I can feel it all the way down into my calf muscle. Good, inhale, come center. Make sure the big toe mounts are grounded evenly. Exhale as you twist the other way. This is another great one that you can do on the golf course. Good, inhale, come back to center. Deep breath and then just fold, holding here, breathing in, breathing out. Ground down again, big toe mounts. Hands come to hips. Slowly come to rise, legs are still crossed. Rip down through the left foot. Now we're going to do a little balancing. One-legged Tadasana. Glutes are firm. Foot is flexed. Core is firm. Inhale. Exhale, extend the leg long in front of you. Good, bend the knee. Exhale, push it out. Breathe. Inhale. Exhale, push it out. Breathe. Good. Inhale. Last one. Push it out, holding four, three, two, crossing, figure four on one. So crossing at the ankle to knee, sitting back into that chair. Lots of different levels to this, right? This is a great one you can do sitting in a bench. You can do it laying down on your back. So we're creating little figure four and you're easing the knee gently away as you're easing the chest slowly down towards the thighs. Good. Slowly come up and rise. Now crossing right over left. Grounding down for the big toe mount. Sitting up, or not sitting up tall, standing up tall, lifting like you're going to lift up and over. The hip flexors come into your fold. Maybe this is as far as you go. Maybe you have a block, paint can, book for your hands. I forgot to call out a block before we started. Good. Take a breath in. And on the exhale, walking fingertips over to the left this time. Big toe mounts grounded. I don't want you caving in. Good. Inhale, center. Exhale, walking over to the other side. Good. Inhale, center. Halfway lift and then just nice fold, breathing in, breathing out. Two more beautiful breaths. Hands come to the hips, slowly come to rise. Right foot grounds, toes are spread out evenly, firmly connected to the earth. Knee bends, one-legged Tadasana. Squeeze the glutes in tight, zip up, that root lock, core lock, shoulders come back and down, hands to hips, inhale. Exhale, press, inhale. Exhale, press, two more. Now hold four, three, two, figure four on one. So we're crossing ankle over knee. I'm sitting back and pulling my hips back so my knee is behind my big toes. Good, and I can see all my toes. And just find your figure four. Once again, this could be done from the bench. You could do this if you're taking a cart around the golf course. Just a little reset for the hips. Or you can do it from a standing and get a little more strengthening through the feet, the ankle, and the calf muscle. Go ahead and release. Stretch it out a little bit. Perfect. I don't want to see what time we're at because I could go on for days. And we are almost out of time. So let's bring it down to the mat. Inhale. Exhale, swan dive fold. Inhale, open halfway lift. Ground the hands, step back, chaturanga, up dog, and downward facing dog. Breathe in, breathe out. Coming down onto your knees, crossing your legs, pulling your feet through, extending them nice and long in front of you. Another really nice stretch that you could do at the golf course, 
Legs are extending long. You're just going to bend the right knee, cross it over, or keep it to the inner thigh, whichever feels better to you, right? So I'm here. I'm going to sit up tall, inhale, and exhale. Think again, a belly coming through. I'm going to hug my thigh. Belly coming through, shoulders and gaze, and the back hand's going to go right along the spine. Good, inhale back to center. Exhale, little counter twist. Nice, inhale back to center. Bring the foot to the inside thigh. Deep breath in, lifting nice and tall. Exhale, fold. Belly's gonna come down towards the knee. Good, inhale and lift. Just switch sides. Shake it out a little bit. Extend the legs long. Left foot comes to the inside thigh, outside thigh. As long as sitting bones are grounded evenly, you're good. So inhale, stack the spine, sit up tall. My belly's gonna come through, I'm gonna hug my thigh. My shoulders are gonna come through and then I'm gonna finish with my gaze. Go ahead, inhale, release. Exhale, little counter twist, belly through, shoulders, gaze. Inhale back to the center, foot comes to the inside thigh. Deep breath in, lift up tall. Exhale, belly connects down towards the thigh. You can always bend the knee, remember, as much as you need to. Support the back. Good, gentle release. Extend legs long, shake them out. And then we're gonna melt ourselves down to the mat. Good, so we'll take a figure four on our back too, just so you've got an example of what it might look like. You could start here just by crossing ankle over knee again. That may be enough. If you want more intensity, you're gonna grab behind the knee. So right now my right ankles cross over my left knee, and I'm grabbing behind my left knee. For more restorative, you can actually do this against the wall, and my foot's planted against the wall. Good, deep, even breathing. Making sure head, neck, and shoulders are on the mat. If you're lifting off and curling up and struggling through this and not able to breathe, then just lower the foot down to the mat and enjoy the stretch. Right? At this point in the practice, we don't want any struggle at all through the practice. You just move into your breath and back out if you find that struggle in a shortened breath. Good. A couple more breaths. Remember that ujjayi pranayama, that's a very internal breathing, internal exploration of the body. All right, let's uncross and then bring the right knee into the chest. Extend it tall to the sky. Take an inhale and maybe follow up forehead to knee. Lowering down. Right knee comes back into the chest. Left leg lengthens. Inhale and then exhale. We'll take a supine twist. So the knee comes across the body. Right knee comes across the body. And my gaze is to the right. Right arm is extended long. This is one of the safest ways to do a twist because you are fully supported by the floor. You can easily put a blanket or a bolster under the knee if you don't want to twist quite as deep. And that way you can actually relax into the pose instead of just letting the knee hang there. Have a bolster, a pillow, a blanket underneath it. Um, and I recommend sitting in this for quite a while. Like you could sit in this three to five minutes on each side. Not doing it on the bed. Good, inhale, bring the knee back to the chest. There's no stability on that soft surface, so always on a hard surface on the floor. All right, lowering down the right knee, left crosses over right, figure four on this side. Close the eyes, just do another internal inventory, nice focus with the breath. The 
breath is calming the body. Good, a couple more breaths and then release. Lowering foot down to the mat. Left knee comes into the chest, give it a squeeze. On the inhale and then exhale, straighten the leg. Grabbing behind the calf or the hamstring, take an inhale and maybe bring the forehead up to the knee to increase the stretch. Good, and lowering back now, down. Left knee back into the chest, right leg is long, inhale. Exhale, draw the knee across the body, supine twist. My left hand's extended long, I'm gazing to my fingertips. Good, and knee comes back into the chest. Once again, it's a really great restorative pose if you have the time, sitting in it three to five minutes, maybe even longer. Perfect. Now, we're going to curl up and we're going to move into our final resting posture, which is Shavasana. But if you happen to have that foam roller or a blanket or a pillow, you're going to put it along the length of the spine. You could roll a couple blankets um, like this, so the entire spine is on the blanket. Um, it's fine on something lower for the head to come off and the neck to open, um, but on something as high as the foam roller, I would not do that. I would just have the entire spine on the foam roller. Good, and then just finding comfort, opening arms, maybe cactus arms, maybe arms out to the side, just this beautiful little chest expansion and close the eyes and we'll just take a couple minutes of a resting pose. Stay just as long as you'd like in your final resting pose, Shavasana, if you're ready to come out. Rolling on your side. If you're on the foam roller, easing off of the foam roller. Long even breath in. Long even breath out. And whenever I'm teaching a yoga class, I always like to move into a space of gratitude before we end the class. So coming to a comfortable cross-legged seat, and maybe you can visualize yourself right out on the golf course. Gratitude for that. And we're able to do that again. Hands gently come to heart center. And we'll end our practice today by saying namaste, which means the light and the teacher in me honors the light and the teacher in all of you. Bowing forward to seal in our practice. Namaste. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining me today. Um, I'm going to be adding on to this class, as in um, I will do another little video that I'll post on our Pure Yoga YouTube channel as well as on our Facebook page 
that will show you postures that you can do um, to prep right before your game. Um, and um, I'll also do some stills of that too, so I'll post that onto Instagram, um, Pure Yoga MN. So watch for those within the next couple of days, um, just so you've got all of that um, very accessible to you before you go out and play.